This is the type of art project that I thought I would only do in college. However, with the emergence of digital art due to NFTs, here I am in After Effects, about to show you a handful of techniques on how to create something like this. So in this video, I wanna show you how you can set up a digital art project by combining different images and objects together, followed by a handful of creative effects to help you execute your creative vision. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel, Sunduck Film. Please be sure to drop a like on this video as it helps us out tremendously. And if you're ready to create some digital art and maybe some NFTs, let's jump in and let's get started. So there's a lot of different moving parts to this piece here. In our first technique, we're gonna talk about how to composite and combine different images together to create one unique image. So I have these images and an object here that I can bring together into one specific composition. So maybe I'll bring in the space background here and I'll position that however I see fit. And then perhaps I want to bring in this random object, which will be the primary uh, you know, image in our case. Open up your object and use the transform tab to just rotate, scale, do whatever you want to do with your random object. It's all up to you and you don't have to use any of the specific elements that I'm using, obviously, but you can download our project files for free and have access to all of this. And sp specifically having an object that's kind of weird and something that stands out that's just not normal is definitely a good starting point. But let's say when you start combining images that have backgrounds, so there's a lot that you can do. For an image like this, I have a black hole. I can come here and grab the ellipse tool here at the top and just kind of create a circle mask by holding shift and control on my keyboard. Just kind of mask around that black hole. I can also hit F on my keyboard for mass feather and feather it and then scale it as I see fit and position it wherever I want this to be. And then say if I have some clouds here that I want to bring into our composition, I want to obviously scale this down. It's a massive image. And to remove the blue in the sky, well, I can go to effect keying and grab say color range is one of the effects that you could use and just select the pen tool and just select the blue. I can increase the fuzziness and that'll help overlay onto our composition. So we have all these images in here, but it's kind of all like has a random color palette to it. So I want to control the brightness and the colors of this scene uh, to kind of make these come together. So one thing I could do is create an overlay. So I'll go to layer new solid, call it overlay, click OK. And then we'll go to effect, generate and grab a gradient ramp. I'll go ahead and change the starter color and I'll change the end color. And then I can change the blend mode of our overlay to say soft light overlay or hard light, depending on what I wanna do. And this will kind of bake in a color over everything. But let's say I wanna dramatically change the colors here. So let's say if I wanna grab the clouds and give this a unique color, I go to effect, color correction, tint, change the color to whatever I want. So maybe I'll do like an orange and then come here to the black and maybe bake in a little bit of blue into it. And now our random head object here is really standing out. So one thing I could do is come here to effect, color correction, brightness and contrast. Uh, and bring down the brightness down to like negative, you know, 130 ish. And then the last effect that you could use for compositing is go to effect color correction curves. I'll apply this to our space background. So let's say if I want to make the space background a little darker, I can just bring this down here. And if I want to bake in a little bit more blue, I can go to the blue channel and pull up the blue band here. So now we're controlling the color and the overall composite of our scene with several of these effects. Before we move further into the video, we have a sponsor, and that's us. If you use After Effects or Premiere Pro, then be sure to check out our Motion Duck extension, which has over 20,000 editable templates for your projects. For example, you can browse, import, and edit templates all from the Motion Duck extension. So you'll be able to save hours of time on every project while producing high quality work. You can also download our free 100 template pack with the links in the description below. And if you purchase anything from our website, you will be supporting our channel, so thank you very much. So the next technique I wanna talk about is adding overall effects to add character and also kind of unify all the graphics in some way. Within a lot of digital art pieces, I've seen this glitch effect here. I'm gonna show how to do that first, very easy. So what we'll do is go ahead and create a new solid, call it map, click okay. Go to effect, noise and grain, and add a fractal noise. Change the fractal type to max. Set it from soft linear to block. Increase the contrast and lower the brightness. Open the transform tab, uncheck uniform scaling and increase the width. And you can also decrease the height by a little bit as you see fit, but we wanna have like these long rectangles like this. Then we'll go into evolution options. We'll alt click the stopwatch for random seed and I'll type in time asterisk 10. This will randomly animate our rectangles. Okay, then we'll take our map layer, go to layer pre-compose. Call it map, move all attributes, click OK. Hide the map layer. Go ahead and go to layer, new adjustment layer. Go to effect, distort, and grab a displacement map. Then set the displacement map layer to the pre-composed map that we just created. Now you can increase the horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement as you see fit. And make sure you check on wrap pixels around. 
And now we'll have these displacements like this here in our composition. You can go ahead and adjust that map however you see fit or download the project file and see how I did mine specifically. So we have a lot of random effects that we can apply and I wanna go through a few of these uh, so you can pick and choose, but really there's no wrong answer to what you can do. The world is open to unlimited possibilities. So we'll go ahead and create ourselves a new adjustment layer and you go to effect and I wanna to go to stylize and grab cartoon many different effects for you to experiment and you can adjust these settings however you see fit but I only want to have this effect up here for like a few moments so what I'm going to do is hit T on my keyboard for opacity add a keyframe for this and then I'm going to move forward by one frame set the opacity to 0% I'll move forward my timeline maybe to halfway through a second add a keyframe move that keyframe back by one frame and set the opacity to 100% I can then alt click the stopwatch type in loop out with an open and close parenthesis and very subtly for one frame we'll have the cartoon effect applied and it's very subtle, but this is where we can continue to stack on effects like this. So for example, I can create another adjustment layer. Go to Effect, Channel, and grab, say, Shift Channels. And then I can turn the blue to Full Off, and I'll change the color completely. Then I go to Effect, Stylize, and grab, say, a Threshold RGB. I can check on uh, Invert Red Channel and Blue Channel. This gives me a unique look. And then I can hit T on my keyboard for Opacity, where we see all those keyframes on that previous adjustment layer. Copy the keyframes and then just paste them onto our new adjustment layer, offset this layer in time by a little bit, and then we've added another sort of chaotic effect right here. Now, if you wanna have a little bit more control with a nice effect, we'll go ahead and create another adjustment layer, go to Effect, Distort, and maybe we'll grab Mirror. I'll set the reflection angle to 90 degrees, and I can adjust the Y value as I see fit. And all I need to do here is drag in the out point so this is only gonna be a few frames long. Then I can take my adjustment layer, go to edit, duplicate, move it around my timeline and just kind of create these random gaps here. So, so now I control when the mirror effect will play in my timeline. So let's say we want to animate some of these objects that we composite together. So let's say we want our head to disappear for a moment. All we need to do is go to edit split layer. We can then kind of just create a gap here by dragging in that endpoint. So then it'll just appear for a moment. Uh, we can also grab, say, our black hole, go to effect, brightness, and, or excuse me, color correction, and then brightness and contrast. Uh, we can alt click the stopwatch for brightness and type in a wiggle, open parenthesis, maybe like a 5, 150. And this will create a flicker animation on that black hole. So we're really starting to piece together something cool here. All right, so let's talk about creating maybe our own objects here in After Effects to combine into our scene. So I'm going to go show how to create these circles that are... I have a little bit of texture and also are floating around in our scene. So I'll come here, create ourselves a new composition. I'll just call it circle. Grab the ellipse tool and I'll draw out a perfect circle by holding down shift on my keyboard. I'll center this baby. And then I'll go to a layer, layer styles, and I'll grab a inner shadow to it. I'll open up our inner shadow. I'll change the color to maybe like a nice blue color. Click okay. The distance to 60 and the size to 50. Then I'll go to effect, generate gradient ramp. You'll have anchor points. I'll go ahead and move these anchor points around. I'll actually set this to a radial ramp and I'll drag the top anchor point here on the top left corner of the circle and I'll move the bottom anchor point. And then I can come here and change my colors to whatever I want. And these are the colors I've picked. Then what I can do is grab the pen tool and draw a mask halfway through our circle. I'll then go to effect, blur and sharpen, grab a Gaussian blur, set the Gaussian blur up to maybe 200 and then go to blend mode, set it to dissolve, then go to effect, channel, and grab a set mat. And then we'll set the mat layer to the bottom shape layer. And then we'll come here to fill at the top and set this to like maybe a hot sort of red. Nice. And then we'll go back to our main composition. And then we'll go to our project panel, drag our circle composition underneath all of our effects. And we'll have and keyboard for position, alt click the stopwatch, we'll and we'll type wiggle, open parenthesis, 0 0.5 comma 250, close parenthesis. We can take the circle, move it around our composition, duplicate it, and start creating variations like scale it down by a little bit. And we can create a handful of circles like this by duplicating randomly and scale it around. So now we've created our own objects and we added a little bit more detail to our art piece. So the point of this video was to teach you a handful of techniques to where you can go ahead and create your own unique piece of work uh, and kind of get you started on that. I want to talk about how I added in a little bit of story to my final art piece here. So for example, so to add a consistent theme into this, I added in a word called chaos to make sense of everything. However, you cannot read the word chaos because it's cut in half the entire time. It's either hidden by the head or when the head disappears, you can only see the other half. And what I'm making sense of here is that when the head disappears, the scene tends to be a little bit more calm. You'll see that the distortions disappear 
and the text stops moving and you can kind of make out what it says and then when the text comes back you can see that everything is in chaos so i really wanted to so i really wanted to have this subtlety to build a small story element to my art piece so i'm not going to show how to create this specifically so think about how you can add like little elements like that to help make sense of your creation if you create your own digital art due to this video please be sure to either leave a comment down below with a link to that work or you can tag me on instagram so i can take a look at that because i'd love to see it so hope you enjoyed this video please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and always be creative.